And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. This is a channel where we talk about anything related to comic books, like new releases, stories, writers, artists, or movies based on comic books. In today's video, I'm going to show you the second volume of the Venom Epic Collection, which is called Lethal Protector. So, with no further ado, let's start. So here I have my copy of Venom Lethal Protector, which is actually the second volume of the Venom Epic Collection. And this is uh, the cover of Web of Spider-Man uh, issue 95, I think, which is also collected here. This is the cover, and it's drawn by Alex Saviuk. And here in the bottom we have the name of the of this volume, and part of the creative team: Michelini, Mahi, Bagley, the rest. The rest of the creative team is here: all the writers, pencilers, letters, inkers, everyone. Well, and now let's take a look at the spine. Of course, it has the Marvel Epic Collection logo, the hero's name, and the volume's name. And this is part of the cover. So, and in the, in the back cover, we have an image that is actually the cover of Marvel Marvel Presents uh, issue 118, which is collected here. Well, it's 121. Yeah, here it is. This one is drawn by Sam Keith and Steve Lytle. Now, let's take a look at all the other things in the back cover. From Villain to Vigilante. Yeah, that's right. In this volume, uh, Venom appears to be a villain at the beginning, but towards the end, he has his first... Um, but towards the end, he becomes uh, not a hero, and Venom Little Protector is also collected here which is Venom's first solo series, which was a limited series, but after that uh, followed many, many, many Venom limited series, so it was like he had uh, an actual ongoing series that uh, every time the story changed, the numbering uh, began from one again. Here we have a synopsis of all the stories here, actually the plot, and from here we can see that it's the second volume of the Venom Collection, and it covers all the stories from the years 1992 to 1993, and this volume collects uh, Missing Spider-Man 361 to 363, 374, Spider-Man The Trial of Venom, Web of Spider-Man 95 to 96, Ghost Rider and Blaze Spirits of Vengeance 5 to 6 and Venom Little Protector 1 through 6. Well, there is also material from Marvel Comics Presents 117 to 122 and Amazing Spider-Man 373 to 375. Actually, not 2 and 375. Now, let's take a look at how it looks inside. Here we have all the other epic collections that are that were available uh, when this was released. The list actually continues here. Yeah, I know there are many, many, many epic collections. We saw the creative team before. This is the table of contents. Here we have our stories, which we will talk about later. So, if we go all the way to the end of this edition, 
we will find the extras. Yeah, here it is. Here we have some covers, some variant covers. Ah, uh, this this is beautiful. I think everyone has seen this. It's by it's an iconic uh, scene. It's by Mark Buckley. Yeah, as I said, it has some covers. This is uh, the introduction to the Spider-Man Carnage trade paperback. Some pinups. This is an article that was published in Marvel Lights number 122. Uh, no, 120. This is the cover of the first edition of the trade paperback of Venom Lethal, Lethal Protector. And then it was reprinted in uh, a few years later, not a few, so quite a few year, years later. And had a new cover, of course. These are some printing variants of the covers. And this, these are some um, trading cards that had Venom in them. Some sketches, co more covers, more covers. This, this is an iconic one. It's from the first issue of Venom Lethal Protector. Well, this is actually a panel uh, from Amazing Spider-Man 374. It's this one that was recolored so that it can be used as a cover. And here we have the first thing we saw but it's like it's re remastered kinda and well this is basically it now let's talk about the stories this volume begins with the first appearance of Carnage so Cletus Cassidy was Eddie Brock's cellmate and when Eddie escaped uh, with his uh, symbiote, part of the symbiote, uh, actually not part of the symbiote, the, symbi the symbiote's um, offspring was left behind in the cell. So Cletus Cassidy bonded with the symbiote's offspring and became the murderous Carnage. Oh, and for all of you Carnage fans out there, uh, Carnage currently has an ongoing series that has uh, 11 issues so far, so you might want to check it out if you want. Um, and then Spidey realizes that he isn't strong enough to defeat Carnage by himself, so he needs Venom's help. So that didn't spoil anything else, I'm going to... Going to move forward to the next story. Perfect. In the next story, Spider-Man and Venom team up with Blaze, uh, with Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider. In the story called Spirits of Venom. And then we have uh, a story from Marvel Presents. In which uh, Venom teams up with Wolverine. Yeah, I know they don't really seem like they team up. It seems more like a fight, but but I think that you know by now that every great team up starts with a fight between the two characters. And they basically team up to defeat Nightmare here. In this story, Venom 
uh, tries to protect Peter Parker's parents because he thinks that Spider because he actually thinks that Spider Man is bad and that he might hurt them in any way or corrupt them, so he wants to protect them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 twisted. It's twisted. And if you're wondering uh, why uh, P P P Peter's parents are alive, uh, well, they aren't. These are actually, how are they called? Life model decoys? Uh, I can't really remember. It's something that has to do with the chameleon and all these things. Yeah, the thing is, they're not actually his parents. They're like robots that replicate, uh, that emulate his parents. His parents' behavior and all the stuff. And then we have Venom's first solo limited series, but it's still a series. And as I mentioned before, uh, Venom basically had many limited series that were like an ongoing series since uh, its issues published month monthly. And there was no gap between them. So it was like he really had an, on an ongoing series. But the numbering just started with one again every time the story changed. Like, uh, for example, uh, the next limited series was Venom Funeral Pyre. So, if they had kept the same numbering from its limited series to limited series so as to make it an ongoing series, then Venom Funeral Pyre would be Venom number seven. And this is actually the story uh, in which the first Venom movie is based on. You know, it has the Life Foundation, Carlton Drake, and all this stuff. Uh, but, fun fact, uh, Riot isn't uh, actually uh, the symbiote of Carlton Drake as it was shown in the movie. Riot was uh, an offspring of Venom like Carnage, but uh, he never bonded with um, Drake, so some things here are not like the movie. Oh, I almost forgot about the trial of Venom. In this story, Eddie Brock's symbiote dies, or at least that's what everybody thinks, and Eddie Brock is on trial for his crimes. His lawyer is Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil. Who actually believes that Eddie Brock is innocent and that all his crimes were committed under the influence of the symbiote. Of course, he is proved wrong since Eddie Brock is actually evil with or without the symbiote. Or at least that's how he was in the beginning and later he became more like another hero. And these are basically all the stories featured in Venom Little Protector. Well, the majority of stories here uh, are awesome, but there are also some bad stories. Does that make the whole volume bad? Absolutely not. The volume is still awesome, but still, but it just has some kind of not bad, just not very good stories. Is this worth buying though? Absolutely. And if you buy it, please read the whole thing. Even though it's 450 pages, you know, it's more than 450 pages, but they are 450 pages full of gold. Okay, not full of gold, some stories are not gold, they're silver at best, but anyways, <laughs> uh, they are great, most of the stories here are great, the art is just amazing. It even has Mark Bagley. I just love Mark, Mark, Mark Bagley's art. Most of the stories are very well written. And they're very enjoyable too. So I think that if you're a Venom fan, you have to give this a read. Now, since we have talked about both, let's see. Which one is the best? Well, it depends on what kind of Venom fan you are. If you prefer stories with Venom as a villain, then this one is for you. If you prefer stories with Venom as an anti-hero, then this one is for you. But, 
if you don't have a specific taste in uh, the kind of character Venom is, then the volume I recommend is this one. This has many Venom stories, and all of them, all of them, are absolutely incredible. They are amazing, they're fantastic, sensational, spectacular. This one is also great, but it's just not as good. So I recommend this one. Now, if I had to rate this one, I would probably give it a 3.5 out of 5. Well guys, this was today's video. I hope you found it useful, and if you really enjoyed it, you can support me by subscribing, clicking the like button, and allowing all notifications. So, until the next time, goodbye true believers! Oh, and for all of you Spider-Man 2099 fans out there, I have pre-ordered the Spider-Man 2099 Omnibus, so as soon as I get my hands on it, I will make a video about it.